It seems right now in the industry there's a lot of talk about CG special effects getting a little bit overused. There seems to be a yearning for things to be a little bit more realistic uh, going forward. And one way to make things more realistic is to actually build them for real. In a brown, uninspiring building on Kerner Boulevard lies 3210 Studios. Although the studio only opened last year, George Lucas' legacy of industrial light and magic lives on through the employees and their unique work. The influence that Mr. Lucas has had on Hollywood, on filmmaking, on storytelling, on practical effects cannot be measured. He brought and then built the largest, at the time, largest and literally best effects house in the world, which was ILM. When I first started at ILM, um, the ratio of practical effects versus uh, CGI effects, there a lot more practical effects going on. Um, and that's what ILM was known for, really, was its practical effects and, and the crew. When I started at ILM in you know, like 87, 88, uh, everything was pretty much, if you didn't shoot it, you didn't get it. Shortly after that, the company moved into the digital world. In the early 80s, computer-generated effects and images, CGI, became more common. Since then, finding a practical effect in a Hollywood blockbuster is rare. It's more of the exception as opposed to the rule. Optical compositing was all photochemical. It was done with film. It was done by shooting multiple passes over one piece of film, um, using holdouts and different techniques that, that uh, had been developed over the years. And you compare that to compositing now, which is done in a computer with a program, a fairly sophisticated, well, a highly sophisticated program like Nuke and um, it's a completely different world. You don't even touch film. It's all digital. Each employee at 3210 has a different story, and very few of them came from a traditional film school background. What happened is I started out in theater. I spent 25 years at one place, and that was Dolby Laboratories. Take your pick. I was in the Navy for eight years, uh, aviation, uh, uh, aviation electronics technician worked on uh, helicopters. What brought all of them together was a love for some aspect of film, and each brought a skill that makes the company what it is. The model makers here come from back the varied backgrounds. Some are cabinet makers, some are ship makers, some were people who just like building things. My course was through the Navy, uh, but I had always loved building things. I was always working with my hands and going, well, what do you mean you can't glue plastic to metal? I'll try it and I just continued doing so. So when I moved up here, I didn't have a day of experience. The film, and specifically special effects industries, have changed drastically in the course of these employees' careers. Many saw the rise of the blockbuster film, and effects-driven movies like Star Wars became more common. If you, if you look at the effects from 20 years ago, and the stuff that was mind-blowing then, you know, compared to you know, some of the cool stuff that's happening now, it was feature quality at the time, but it's like probably, you know, wouldn't be too acceptable now. The special effects industry in California is far from thriving. Because of tax credits, currency exchange rates, and labor practices, companies in other English-speaking countries have a 35 to 60% cost advantage over Los Angeles-based companies. I think one of the things that's happening in, 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 in effects these days is a lot of it's going offshore. A lot of it's going to India, a lot of it's going to China, a lot of it's going to London, a lot of it's going to Canada. It unfortunately was one of the reasons why I was let go at ILM. Uh, one reason that that has grown in uh, recent history is that the CG software is becoming easier to use and cheaper. And of course the other thing that drives it is the uh, producers desire to make movies as inexpensively as possible. They can put an army of artists on thousands and thousands and thousands of frames of film 
and they've got it down now. Now, the first stuff that we got, at least at ILM, the first stuff we got back from them years and years ago was terrible. But they have gotten the offshore, um, the lower end stuff has gotten really good. It's kind of decimating the visual effects industry in California. This would seem to make 3210 a vulnerable company as it gets many of its contracts from a competitive bidding process with some international companies. However, they seem surprisingly optimistic about the future. There's something in my mind that our country in general has an edge on, and that's creativity. There's some ability we have to create things like Microsoft Word, like Apple, like Google, and great special effects. There seems to be a yearning for things to be a little bit more realistic uh, going forward. So I'm hoping that uh, more and more films will start to use practical effects instead of just CG, uh, and the perfect combination of practical and CG will give the perfect results for the movies. CG, I can do wild camera moves that you could never do in practical, but there's something about being graced in, based in reality that I think people appreciate. Because when you start doing too many wild things, you're now watching effects, you're no longer watching a movie. <laughs> The fish is so bright I gotta wear shades. <laughs>